behalf of the Shankar family, I would like to welcome our favorite president, Dr. Abdul Karam. I would also like to take this opportunity to welcome our board members, well wishers, and the other students and well wishers from outside who have come to hear him speak. Uh, it's truly inspirational to have you here, sir. And as in the short interaction that you had with the scientists, this is a, this is a moment none of us ever forget. So we're really grateful that you could make it here today. And on behalf of Shankar Netrale, we have a small token of our appreciation that we would like to hand over to you. And I request uh, Dr. Baskaran to kindly hand over this little memento of your visit. Since, uh, since we know how close I care is to your heart, this time we, we thought that in order to make this visit memorable, we will dedicate all the free surgeries being done in the hospital today in your name. over the list of names and the photographs of the people who are having surgery today. Thank you, sir. Uh, I will now... I will take this opportunity to briefly uh, lead you through what we have done in the last 10 years since you visited us. The last time you came here, you called us the Temple of the Eye in 2001. And today I take this opportunity to tell you... I take this opportunity to tell you what we at Vision Research Foundation have done in the past 10 years. The first thing that we have done is this building, the Kamal Nayan Bajaj Institute for Research in Vision and Ophthalmology. 50,000 square feet of dedicated lab space for eye research. It's a state-of-the-art facility that includes labs on biochemistry, bioinformatics, cell biology, stem cell, lens biology, pathology, nanobiotechnology, microbiology, and genetics. I will quickly lead you through some of the things, highlights of what we have done in research and teaching in the last 10 years. You visited our biochemistry facility and you saw our uh, mass spectrometer. This is some of the other information, other devices that we have there, an atomic force uh, uh, absorption spectroscopy, an HPLC co column, and other things. Their focus has been on multiple things. Two of the recent publications that they've had is on tear proteomics where we have looked at the tears, the protein, uh, proteins in tears to see whether they can help us detect disease. And also we have highlighted the role of homocysteine in retinal diseases, something which is very common in India and where you have, uh, which is associated with multiple retinal diseases. These are our areas of focus. Drug development is one of our areas of focus. In our Larsen and Tubro pathology department, we concentrated a lot on childhood cancers. We are one of the referral centers for childhood cancers across the country, and we have tried to look at gene markers which can help us identify which cancers are actually penetrating, uh, uh, going beyond the eyeball. In recognition of this, the Department of Biotechnology has given us a center, uh, has recognized us as a center for excellence, and is funding our research in biomarkers and nanotechnology applications in retinoblastoma in children. The LNT Microbiology Research Center has, been, has done quality research, and over the years we have had 153 publications from there. We are sh shortly going to be recognized as an accredited program for, the, for performing tuberculosis culture and drug susceptibility testing. We have also recognized that increasing drug resistance is one of the biggest problems that the world is facing. And in this uh, um, context, we have got the next-gen sequencer, which is going to help us identify the genome in the bacteria that is recognized responsible for this drug resistance. You asked us about glaucoma a little while back, and I'm happy to share with you that our genetics department published this paper in Nature Genetics where they identified the first gene to be associated with angle closure glaucoma, a disease that is very prevalent in India. We were really fortunate when you visited us in 2001. You visited two large epidemiology studies that we did, and I would like to share some of the things that we learned from there. One, we learned that 
one in nine people above the age of 40 has glaucoma. The second is, we also learned that angle closure glaucoma is a huge problem in India. Today we have about 25 million people with the disease. In eight years time, that is going to go up to nearly 50 million people. And in 30 years time, it's going to be nearly 90 million people. And we really don't know who is at risk of worsening and who is not. So this is an area of focus that we need to have. In diabetic retinopathy, we have had multiple um, studies that we did. I will share with you briefly some of the results. In the urban arm of the diabetic retinopathy study, we found that 30% of urban residents were actually diabetic. And about 3.5% uh, of them, of the general population, had diabetic retinopathy. 18% of the diabetics had retinopathy. In the rural arm, we found the prevalence of diabetes was lower, but the pre prevalence of retinopathy was similar. And what we would really like to tell you is that the van that we used to do this work in the rural arm was came from our teleophthalmology project, which you were kind enough to inaugurate in 2003. <laughs> in addition to using these facilities for research, we have also used them to screen patients. And in the last uh, eight years, we have screened 420,000 people using our teleophthalmology facilities. Everybody had a complete eye evaluation. And this was only possible thanks to the support and thanks to your, uh, your encouragement, sir. We took this one step further. We have an understanding with uh, Indian Institute of Technology, Madras, where we work together in developing biomedical devices. The first device that we, you, the first thing that we did with this, uh, following this MOU, was to take your idea a step further and make a mobile surgical van so that we can actually go out into the community and operate on patients there. I'm happy to share with you that this van is currently out for surgical purposes, and this is the first van that has been designed for this purpose, and we are also happy to share with you that. <laughs> when it comes to training, we have trained 135 research scientists, 200 plus ophthalmologists, 31 PhDs, with another 41 PhDs currently training us, and 465 opth optometrists. We have affiliations with various universities. What I would like to share here is that we were recently approached by the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh to be an examination center, the only one in India. We used to do the course in the past. <laughs> and we, are ha we would be happy to be a part of it again. Our elite school of optometry, the oldest optometry college in India, in addition to the teaching that they do, they of, do a lot of community work. And this is work done by the students in the, of elite school. They have screened more than 100,000 people in the last three years alone. And this includes pulse screening of school children. <laughs> in one day, they go out and screen 10,000 children in the schools in and around Chennai. In addition to that, they do their bit for awareness. In association with the, consult, uh, with the ophthalmologists, the optometrists, and uh, with the help of Jaya TV, they are conducting 100 different, different awareness programs, short segments, every day at 7 o'clock in the morning. And this has really helped to, uh, to pass on the message of eye care across uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, the, the Titan Eye is a chain, is a chain of uh, optometry dispensing facilities across the country. And they approached us to ensure that the quality of the optometrists that were there in their facilities were good enough. And the Elite School of Optometry runs training programs for all these optometrists, and so far have trained 900, more than 900 people who man their centers across the country. Sir. When it comes to technology, we have tied up with the Tata Consultancy Services to develop our own ophthalmic EMR, which is currently used at all our facilities, and we are moving towards a completely paperless hospital in this regard. We have also developed a clinical decision support system where you can input the history and the findings of the patient and come up with possible reasons for it and which has real use in the community and in the periphery. The National Knowledge Network, we are part of it. And uh, for various reasons, we have not been able to uh, utilize its uh, potential to the maximum. What we have done, though, is we have an e-learning portal, the ekalavia.org, from where we transmit our classes across the country 
and people can uh, either li listen in on the webcast or can log in and watch all lectures that happen in Shankar Netral. When you came to and visited us last time, you had said that you had a dream that the three institutes should collaborate together, LV Prasad, Arvind Aikar, and Shankar Netralia. We have taken a first step in that chapter when we came together to create the IRG Arvo India chapter. This is the premier eye research body in the world, and the India chapter has been formed by these three institutions. I would also like to share with you that this DNA chip that we, this, uh, that we devised to ensure rapid diagnosis of, um, um, a drug of diseases of the eye was developed in collaboration with LV Prasad Eye Institute in phase one. We also have a joint proposal submitted with Arvind Eye Hospital to, sub to study the changes in the pattern of conjunctival flora in South India. And in addition, we share our classes with LV Prasad Eye Hospital. From this very hall, we connect to them and they connect to us on a regular basis. The future, what do we hope for the future? I will show you a few of the things that we plan to do, hope to do. Uh, you visited our stem cell laboratory and you saw some of the work that is being done over there. In addition to using the stem cells for clinical purposes, we have managed to grow an artificial cornea in the lab and hope to take it to clinical trials quite soon. In addition, we also have a uh, nanobiotechnology department which has collaborations with multiple people including the University of Missouri, they have multiple publications and have collaborations across the world. In addition, they have, trans they have transferred aptamer technology to the Department of Atomic Energy. So using these collaborations and leveraging these ideas that we have, we have a dream that we can set up a center for excellence in nanomedicine and stem cell biology at Sri City, which is about 50 miles from, 50 kilometers from here, where there's a spe uh, special economic zone. We have collaborators who are willing to work with us in this the biggest target, biggest stumbling block that we have is the cost of 250 crores. And we hope that with your kind blessings, the next time you visit us, it will be to inaugurate this facility. Sir, so I would uh, now take this opportunity to go ahead with what everybody is waiting for. With Peter Pratt, we would like to uh, invite Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam to deliver the session. Thank you. Good evening, friends. Good evening. You know, for me, it's a great. Uh, what can I say, inspiration to meet uh, uh, Dr. Badrinath every time I meet him. <laughs> but an inspiration for me that one single person, uh, uh, his thoughts, Alamaram Mayri Vircham, Alamaram hospitals, Alamaram Vircham. So it has grown, and, uh, and nearly 2 million patients last uh, 30 years plus you have done. So I really uh, inspiration for me at uh, this institution, particularly Sankara Netralaya. Uh, Dr. Padrinath Ji, uh, Dr. Baskaran, specialists, doctors, paramedics, nurses, researchers, students, distinct guys. One thing I found wherever I went, uh, always smiling, you know. <laughs> it's a good symptom. The organization is very healthy. <laughs> I, I can see that. Everywhere, whether the researcher or the respected, the driver of uh, Badrinath, everybody was uh, 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 smiling. So I'd like to congratulate you uh, for a great institution, what has been created here, the Temple of I. I'm delighted, friends, to, to visit Sankaranetralaya and rightly named as the Temple of I. Uh, the mission of healthcare is in Sankara Nathila has commenced, I think, 1978. And nearly uh, uh, more than three decades of eye care, eye care research in Sankara Nathila has become very important milestone in reducing the avoidable blindness considerably in the country and also pioneering research in stem cell application and glaucoma diagnosis and treatment. You see, I have visited almost 
all ophthalmic center in the country wherever i go i look for only one thing what is the type of glaucoma research going on what type of diagnostic system for glaucoma is there what the type of treatment going on so the pioneering work started from this tag of sagranathirala pioneer work for uh, uh, glaucoma started from here. i would like to greet with gratitude the founder dr b dr s s badrinath for his unique contribution in eye care of india friends i would like to congratulate all the team members of sagranathirala for the excelling contribution in eye care i will say a few words uh, on some something what i feel on the eye research missions in challenge in eye care friends vision 2020 program has created a unique awareness among the doctors patients and social transformers which has resulted in a good impact on care giving and reduced the number of cases avoidable blindness in the country though we have made substantial progress in the reduction of avoidable blindness in the country through the vision 2020 program you are all great. you are a great partner in that this is such as diabetic retinopathy glaucoma are increasing very fast and for which we have to find a cost of a solution so that our aim of complete eradication of avoidable blindness within the next decades achieved it is noteworthy sankar netralaya's contribution towards glaucoma research through a study the chennai glaucoma study and molecular and genetic as glaucoma in south indian population ongoing 2201 this study report reveals important risk factors associated with the primary angle cause of disease um, with the recommendation of a diagnostic and treatment i met number of researchers here there a few minutes back and they was very happy that lot of research going on in this area another important research area <coughs> is on the major finding on diabetic retinopathy and possible research areas such as as early and cost effective diagnosis of the diabetic retinopathy and integrated care for diabetic retinopathy neuropathy and nephropathy nephropathy i am sure the world class research will emanate from sagranathiralaya as usual in the field of glaucoma diagnostic and treatment and diabetic retinopathy research this just now i saw a lot of research were going on friends when i see all of you the members of sagranathiralaya who are working day and night to reduce the avoidable blindness in the country i would like to share with you my experience of my visits and discussion with researchers clinicians in the field of eye care in many parts of the country in the world first i am going to australia a brian holden vision institute on 18 may 2011 i was in sydney where i visited and interacted with a team of doctors ophthalmologist and vision expert from the brian holden vision vision institute at the university of south wales Professor Brian Holden and Professor G N Rao are working together on many research activities. Both Brian Holden Vision Institute and L V Pratha Institute are conducting research and trials in the areas such as identifying preventing genetic eye degradation, low cost robust vision correction devices. These are the two specialized in their field. Then I found Schaffen's Eye Research Institute, Boston. Subsequently, in in September two zero eleven. I visited Sheffield's Eye Research Institute in Boston where I saw unique work on the image processing in relation to visual function and clinical psychophysics in the low vision rehabilitation image understanding and the evolution of a display vision interaction they are also working on voclometer control and binocular vision now then the lv prasad eye institute which uh, quite often i visit when i visited lv prasad eye institute both at hyderabad and bhubaneswar one research area yielding good results in treating burn cases by taking stem cell uh, from the patient's eye itself and administer on the patient for curing burn injury or spillage of yes acid but now i saw in um, sagranathalaya that uh, 89 patients have been cured i understand using the stem cell now in arvind eye care system madurai the venkataswami eye research institute researchers are working on better treatment and prevention of diabetic retinopathy through gene therapy 
and developing medicine for treating cornea affected personnel with uh, fungal infections. Now, here, when I'm here, Sankarnetalaya, Sankarnetalaya Medical Research Foundation has organized Southeast Asia Glucoma Interest Group, uh, Interest Group Conference, Pioneer Work, where they, the thought of retinal uh, neuronal dysfunction through glaucoma was discussed. They also provided a future direction for glaucoma therapy by prevention or delay, a delay or reverse decay of the retinal ganglion cells and axons. The organizer found the result of the genomics and proteomics would play a vital role in early detection of glaucoma. I saw a very a, a important uh, facility has been generated uh, for proteomics work. Stem cell may help restore vision in patients who have glaucoma by repopulating or rescuing the damaged cells. Stem cell can also be used for terminal stages of glaucoma. A few of our ophthalmologists are already working in stem cell therapy. Gene therapy approach is applicable to either lower the intraocular pressure or protecting the retinal ganglion cell. This approach could reprogram the target cell by transferring genetic material into them so that they lower intraocular pressure physiologically. Increase in research infrastructure and human resource. Visits of 12 ophthalmic institutions in India and abroad brought out one aspect clearly that is, intensity of research and clinical treatment has, has to get enhanced by increasing the research scientists, clinical doctors, and the paramedical staff who are exclusively involved in the research of glaucoma. I suggest Sankarnathalaya, with its pioneering, pioneering, pioneering work as foundation, to make adequate research capacity pressure for ophthalmic care can be built both by the government and private eye care institutions. Now, one suggestion, Sankarnathalaya may consider evolving a world knowledge platform for ophthalmology which can bring together the expertise available in the eye care in all parts of the world in a single platform with three emissions, glaucoma research for evolving innovative and cost-effective diagnostic and treatment process, uh, early diagnosis and treatment of retinopathy, uh, working out a donor-friendly law for organ donation, particularly eye, so that the large number of donors will come forward and reduce the gap between the cornea needed for transplantation and cornea availability through the present legal environment. Now, I thought to say a few research, since I am in the midst of ophthalmic community of Sankranathalaya, I would like to suggest a few research areas which can change the course of eye care. Just now I saw some of the nano area you are all working. And I would like to suggest a few research areas which can change the eye course of eye care. Nanotechnology is finding a large-scale application in drug delivery system and biomedical application and nanostructure and devices. The low dimensionality of many nanostructure in which electrons are free to move in only two, one or even zero dimension has a profound effect on their chemical, electronic and optical properties. Uh, the practical application of these effects is only just beginning to be realized in such devices as laser based on quantum wires and quantum dots. By using quantum behavior, researchers can tailor the basic characteristics of the material and devices to achieve greater efficiency, faster, speed, faster speeds and high packing density devices for electronic, photonic, catalytic, magnetic and biomedical application. For example, the neural stimulatory microsystem requires fairly uniform nano-sized electrode arrays for focal simulation of neural tissue for the treatment of blindness. Using nanotechnology research, ophthalmologists can find innovative treatment methods for glaucoma. As you may be aware, there are some leading research initiatives in the world which give promising hope in the treatment of glaucoma where convergence of technologies plays a major role. Since a lot of young, young researchers are there, I would like to say, number one, applied nanotechnology aimed at the regeneration of neuroprotection of the central nervous system, CNS, will significantly benefit from the basic nanotechnology research conducted in parallel with advances related to biological sciences. It has appeared in surgical neurology in uh, 2005. Next one, people with color blindness 
induced by damage to the optic nerve have 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 had their vision partially restored with the help of an implanted nano scale scaffold that has encouraged nerve tissue to the regrow this is new scientist in march 2006 optic nerve generation is the key to partially reverse blindness from the glaucoma intensive research is needed then approach through the traditional medicine route is another method to find a treatment regime for glaucoma for example they extract of the leaves of the chinese tree uh, bilibo while indians lay their hopes in ashwagandha of ayurveda for treatment of glaucoma we need in depth work on this and similar approaches we, i understand that research is going going on for evolving a therapeutic vaccine against glaucoma new innovative ideas of this kind should be encouraged by sankara netralaya through world knowledge platform so friends with the, with this i will say that uh, in conclusion friends in conclusion i would like to discuss about the role of doctors and uh, and, uh, and uh, the role of doctors, role of doctors in and social workers in foster realization of vision 2020 goal there was a meeting of uh, cured patients and uh, their doctors and a few social workers one important result was discussed the relation between the patient and the doctor extend to the patient families and doctors medical care this in turn transmits the effective message from one family to another family on advice how to prevent eye diseases necessity of periodic checks dietary habits and need for lifestyle change including eye exercise for good eye health actually i believe this good contact between doctors and patient is comparable to that of a teacher and a student I request every doctor to play the role of a teacher in advising every family on eye disease prevention, particularly glaucoma, and methods to maintain a healthy vision. I hope, uh, I hope you will all find time for this noble action. May my best wishes to all of you for providing light to the needy. May God bless you all, friends. Now, I, I made it. Uh, bit to technical so what i felt is some question general question you can ask general question any general question you can ask other than i also can ask other than ophthalmology also you can ask time is there okay any one can ask okay so you have to search to ophthalmology already make this ophthalmology i am learning sir <laughs> well i this is, i got lot of friends in ophthalmology like starting with uh, patinath ji only their knowledge 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 okay ask all of lot of young people will have a lot of questions you know yeah. ophthalmologist standing here i would like to ask this for young ophthalmologists young clinicians young basically the youth to research and research activities more a part of the life how do you motivate them to do that more and more and You see, I personally believe that uh, research is one of our weakness in India. Uh, the research, the I am advocating research, teaching research, uh, or research practice, research, uh, clinical work, where practice means clinical work, because the the most of the time. our uh, clinic at the particularly healthcare centers they are fully loaded with clinical areas they uh, research areas they do not have sufficient time even whatever intent for research they have become a clinical work so the research uh, we have particularly healthcare there are unique disease of glaucoma the type what you are having is unique to india is a unique to india in asia naturally our research to be the highest priority in that area malaria for example is a unique disease here large number of people get affected we have to find a unique method then our um, hiv uh, the c type virus uh, we have to find a anti anti vaccine uh, for hiv anti vaccine for hiv and malaria anti vaccine we have to find so the challenges are more so give a new thrust should be there on the research the research can be there i have seen myself that wherever the young leaders 
in the research uh, are there, it's good. For example, I tell you a story. The Sir C. V. Raman, he was, uh, you know, he was conducting a research, uh, well, intensive research and backscattering of light. Now, he got a Nobel Prize. In 1954, at that time, President Rajendra Prasad sends a letter to Sir C. V. Raman. Uh, Sir C. V., I, we have decided to give you, nation has decided to give you Bharat Ratna. We want you to come on January 15th. You stay with me. President wrote a letter. Sarshi Raman writes a letter. Thank you, President, offering me. I'm very happy to receive the Bharat Ratna. But I am very busy. We five <laughs> research scholars. They are writing theses now. I have to be with the research scholars. I have to sit with them, see the research papers are done, and I have to sign. So I can't come some other day. <laughs> this is this is a this is science lives for science. This is the type of attitude we need. Such a glittering person. Uh, waiting for him in Rashtrapati Bhavan, a glittering show, but for him, research scholars are more important. So our senior scientists have to value the young scholars' research. That's the answer to your question. Good question you asked. Yes. Yes, that question. Madam Patinath, yes. <laughs> I'm sir. Yeah. Uh, you talked about Arvindai Hospital, LG Prasad Institute in Shankar Mekhalaya, where good amount of free surgeries are done. But one thing with all the three institutes is full-time ophthalmologists. We find that the young doctors are not for that. No. They would like to get into private practice. How to motivate them? Private practice in practice, the, you know, in they ophthalmology. Definitely, ophthalmology no. okay, but they definitely go only for money. Mm. <laughs> in working at the institute, perhaps they would see, like to work. I, see, you are in a, such a place. Uh, like you and uh, Dr. Badrinath is there. Normally, researcher uh, the, is a, the, a great personality is like a magnet. Okay, he is just like magnet. So young people get attracted if there is a big magnet is there. So every establishment have to have magnets we have to have that are attracting either by service or research or clinic. So these are the people who are tracking. How it's possible? I saw your stem cell research center. So in your stem cell research center, so many young people doing so many research in difficult areas. So that means you are attracting people. Okay. So congratulations. Uh, respected sir, there is one question about uh, education. Where are you? You have interacted many students, many parents, many uh, teachers, and the society. Whether our current system is, uh, is normal, or is there any a role of students, teachers, parents in the society according to your uh, proposed system to develop India to be as a developed nation? You see, just today morning, I was uh, in a big uh, meet, uh, you do conclave, education conclave. There, according to me, with their, uh, our education got three-dimensional situation. One is primary, secondary, and higher education. I don't have much comment at the secondary and higher education, but I got a tremendous comment at the primary education. Primary education need a crying reform, because we, I want to see the primary education to have a creative teacher, a creative classroom, a creative syllabus. All the three missing now. So this is the foundation for education. If you want a good ophthalmology, primary education, you get the best primary education for any field, any field like that. So there, reforms needed. I'm pushing that idea. Okay? I'm pushing that idea. Yes. yes. Hello, sir. Uh, sir, uh, this is regarding research. 
uh, so how to motivate or promote unique research sir? like in india we always do something which has been done in western countries mm -hmm. it's just a copying or reinventing the wheel so how you think can uh, we can improve the unique kind of research in india like in uh, western countries unique people do the unique research no <laughs> you know just see this light you see this light bulb light and bulb when you see the light and bulb you remember a guy you remember a guy? Yeah. Huh? No, Thomas Alva Edition. Whenever a aircraft fly, you remember a guy? Yes. Two guys you remember. When the telephone bell rings, you remember a guy? Yes. Alexander, you remember. Then one scientist, he was traveling, Indian scientist. That guy was traveling from London to Calcutta by ship 1930s. When he reached Calcutta port, he saw the sun was shining, but the sky was blue, but sea was blue. He asked a question, why? But he has to work seven years to find out the reason. Got a Nobel Prize for that. Sir C. V. Raman. backscattering of light he discovered. These are all unique people. There is one lady who got two Nobel Prize. Only one lady. <laughs> Madam Curie got the Nobel Prize for her radium discovery and also characterization of radio materials. Now these eight people, they are all called unique people, okay? Unique people. What are their unique qualities I analyzed? These eight people, you said they are unique. I analyzed. When I analyzed, I found they have got four qualities, okay? Number one, they have great aim. Great aim. The, uh, Alexander Graham Bell did not have a laboratory to make a telephone. He built the telephone in his brain. You know, brain itself. He assembled all the components of telephones. Assembled, went to the second hand market, got the material, then put no laboratory and made the first telephone. Uh, so they must have a great aim. Now, small aim is a crime. They had great aim. Number two, they had continuously acquired the knowledge through great books, through great teachers, great human beings. Number three, of course, you have to sweat. Madras, you sweat. You have to sweat. Okay? You have to sweat. Fourth is perseverance. They are not afraid of the problem. Any work you do, there will be a problem. Okay? Some problem will appear. Problem should not become your master. You have to become the captain of the problem, defeat the problem, and succeed. So the four qualities you have, you become a unique researcher. Sir? Last question. Yes, sir. <laughs> this guy tells me last question. My guy, that is Sheridan. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, yes. So, practice makes men perfect. Mm. Like, practicing in community will make the medical doctors perfect. Mm. So, we have to make the medical doctors practice in the community. So, what uh, modifications in the education system we should bring about to make this medical doctors or paramedical professionals to be perfect? See, madam, I don't know, but one thing I want to tell you. Uh, you see, we have got 600,000 villages, okay? 600,000 villages, 700 million people live there. And our MBBS doctor don't want to go there, okay? To primary health center, they don't want to go there. Now, what we do? What we do? I have a solution. The solution is, nurses... Nurses, they do BSc, MSc. And tell them the last year MBBS syllabus should be taught to them and they become PhD nurses in the rural medicine. In the rural medicine. And they should be posted to the primary health centers. This is my idea. Okay. Okay. You are happy? I have uh, uh, some books for the library of uh, Sankaranetralaya. Sir, I will give to you. Thank you, sir, for those truly inspiring words. And we will keep what you have said in mind and take the hospital to greater, take ophthalmology in India to greater heights. Uh, it's been a real pleasure to have you here, sir, and we are really grateful that you volunteered to come and visit us and spend so much time with us. Uh, 
I request uh, everybody to kindly stand for the national anthem. Shukran Ami Jami Tata Shukran Ami